Okay, good morning, guys. I thought I would just record myself going through the paper one. Now, I know that we have done um, our analysis on it. You've gone through the mark scheme, so I'm not going to be explaining the marking points. You'll be able to see this from my modelled answers and from what you've already written. But I did want to go through the paper and talk about where you made those mistakes, because there were some times where you weren't reading the question properly which has led to you losing some easy marks because a you weren't thinking clearly and you know what that's probably just exams okay and it was a hard paper because there was a lot of maths on here um, and I did that for a reason because I want you to see every possible type of maths question that can come up in biology so that I know which ones you struggle with so that we can work on those next year okay it wasn't me just being mean for no reason it was me being a bit mean because I want to make sure that you are prepared for your summer exams next year okay so if we start I'm really hoping that you can see my screen well it is sharing so I'll double check in a second but you can see I'm bored behind me we're gonna start with the first question now the first question most of you could tell me which uh, that the pancreas was a which is fine. I mean, you can see on my model answers, I've labelled the glands. If you can do that, if you ever get a diagram question, then that might help you with the question. So if you do that straight away without reading the question, um, then it might help you work out what your answers are. OK, and with multiple choice questions, there always is two answers you can discount immediately and then it's a 50 50 choice and that makes it really easy okay now the first one was nice and easy but the second one which gland produces progesterone now i haven't technically taught you progesterone this year uh, we talked about progesterone last year when we talked about the menstrual cycle and it's one of the hormones that's involved in controlling and regulating the menstrual cycle in females okay so here process of elimination we can automatically discount c a lot of you put c because i don't think you were thinking okay or probably thinking progesterone sounds like testosterone okay ends in the same bit okay um so you possibly got confused there okay but progesterone is um re responsible should i say for um Controlling the menstrual cycle, which is only in women. So obviously we can discount C because it's in a man. It says so right here. And the man. Okay. Um, so the answer is D because I know that B is the adrenal gland and A is the pancreas. Okay. So it's just where you went wrong on those questions. Now the maths question here, most of you have actually worked through what your answers are, but with a ratio, you are just expressing your answer as something to one. OK, like surface area to volume ratio. We did surface area to volume ratio earlier in the year, OK, where you had to have your surface area and your volume next to each other and divide one by the other to get it as something to one. That's exactly what is happening here. However, if you look at my units, here I have to convert the units to be the same because my units okay, for the hormonal speed is in centimeters per minute and my nerve impulses is in meters per second so I have to make them the same it's going to be easier to convert the hormonal speed okay you could also convert the nerve impulses the other way around and you will get exactly the same answer but it's easier to go from centimeters to meters and then minutes in seconds okay um so you get two marks for your converting okay and then you get one mark for expressing it as a ratio and dividing one by the other okay that's where your marks come from here most of you or say most of you most of you didn't put anything because you weren't really sure some of you did put something but didn't get the answer right you got two marks because your ratio was slightly off so maybe it was 78.6 to 1 because you didn't convert one of the units well you didn't convert your meters uh, centimeters to meters correctly you had a power of 10 error okay so that means that i haven't got as many zeros as i need or i've got you know the other way around i've got too many zeros in front of it okay so the next question on this um well, on hormones in the nervous system was describing three other differences between the nervous system and the hormonal system now one of the um most common mistakes here is the fact that some of you uh, linked speed 
Now, hormonal system is slower than the nervous system, but I already know that because I have speed mentioned in this question here. I have speed mentioned in part B. So because I've already had a question talking about speed and it says three other differences in your question, you can't get a mark for talking about speed here, even though it's technically correct. OK, and that's just because this question here has got other differences. So because they've said other, we can't mention the one we've already talked about. OK. So describe three other differences between the central nervous system and the hormonal ner uh, nervous system. Um, most of you could give me two, like nervous system uses neurons, impulses are electrical, hormones are chemical, um, impulses travel to specific cells, impulses only give a short term response. OK, you need three because it says three, four, three marks. OK, you can't just write two and get the full three marks. OK. So that was a nice question to start with. This one was a horrible question. I'm going to tell you why, and I'm really sorry, um, but this is one kind of question that I've never seen before on the heart, and I wanted to see how you guys did on it. OK, um, because actually this is from the uh, January paper this year. So this is from the January paper. They had a similar question on their paper one for the summer, but obviously I couldn't use that for you. I didn't have that paper when I made this up. But I did have the January paper and this is the way that your exam board is going with more kinds of different application questions. Now, this is an application question because whenever you see a diagram of the heart, you see a diagram of the heart that is kind of uh, cut in half lengthways. OK, so cut from the top all the way down to the bottom like you were butterflying a chicken breast. OK to open it up so you could see that all the structures inside. OK, so you would have all four chambers on your diagram and you would see the septum in the middle and you'd see the blood vessels at the top. Here, they haven't done that. Here, you have what they said, a transverse section. So what they've done, instead of cutting it lengthways, okay, down the middle, like butterflying a chicken breast, they've cut it in half like you were cutting into it to eat it, okay? So they've basically just cut through and they're expecting you to still know the structures of the heart and where they are. OK, so this is applying your knowledge to an unfamiliar context. So this is another way that they can test your application of your knowledge. OK, so the first one, draw an X to show the position of the septum. OK, I know the septum is what separates my left side and the right side of my heart. I have my left ventricle wall over here. And I have my right ventricle wall over here. So if I'm separating the left and the right side, then my septum's got to be in the middle, which is I accepted anywhere on this strip here. So if you put your X anywhere there, it would be fine. If you put it on the side, because I saw some of you that had put it right on the side, I was nice. So you'd put it, let me just put my thing. So you'd put it kind of here. I was nice and I accepted that. If you put it anywhere in this space or this space, I couldn't give it to you. Okay, because that's actually the left ventricle. And the right ventricle. OK, so. Just be careful there, because um, obviously. On the mark scheme, it just gave you an X of where it was. Um, but when your mark schemes for your actual final exams come around, they're actually moderated by examiners first. So we see what kind of mistakes that you've made. So there would be allowances for these kinds of things. OK. Now, this question is very frustrating. I was a little bit proud, guys, that. Most of you mentioned pressure because remember last time we did this and we were talking about the differences in blood in arteries and veins. OK, um, we talked about the fact that arteries are higher pressure and is, is oxygenated blood. Now, some of you got a bit confused between oxygenated and deoxygenated and which one carries which. OK, so just remember, OK, that um, veins carry deoxygenated blood and arteries carry oxygenated blood. OK. Here, you can't get a mark for pressure. And I'll tell you why you can't get a mark for pressure because of this word, because this word here, the composition of blood, means what blood is made up of. OK, so I can't get any marks for talking about pressure here because pressure is not what the blood is made up of. That's how the blood moves out of the heart. OK, so I can't get any marks for talking about pressure. OK. 
So here we want to talk about whether the coronary artery, what blood in the coronary artery looks like. So here you can talk about only the coronary artery or you can only talk about the coronary vein. OK, for the opposite marking points. So you could say that the blood in the coronary artery contains more oxygen or is oxygenated and the blood in the coronary artery contains less carbon dioxide. OK, so if it's if it's got lots and lots of oxygen, it will have less carbon dioxide because it's just been to the lungs. OK, so therefore carbon dioxide would have um, diffused out of the blood into the alveoli to have been uh, removed from the body. So there will be a um, low level of carbon dioxide in blood in the coronary artery and a high level of oxygen, OK? You could have said the opposite marking points for the coronary vein. So you could have said that the coronary vein contains less oxygen and more carbon dioxide, OK? But they had to be correct for which one you were talking about, OK? So you didn't have to have one marking point for the coronary artery and one marking point for the coronary vein. Unless, kind of, so for example, if you said blood in the coronary artery contains more oxygen and blood in the coronary vein contains more carbon dioxide, they would be acceptable, OK, because you've talked about one in each. OK, so. This one, part three, well done, guys. OK, most of you got um, at least two marks here. OK, some of you got the full three marks. Actually, quite a lot of you got the full three marks because we've done this question before. So well done. OK, um, but some of you made the mistake of not saying um, why or telling me where blood was going from and to. So, for example, um, here it generates more force to pour, um, pump blood around the body. You didn't say it was going around the body. Or if you were talking about the right ventricle as a comparison, you didn't talk about the fact that blood was going to the lungs or only just going to the lungs. OK, so you have to tell me where blood is going um, to or from and you have to say why. So why? Blood. So some of you did say because blood has to be pumped to the body, OK, but you have to tell me why the ventricle wall is thicker. OK, so most of you could tell me that it was thicker, but you didn't tell me why. OK, because it's got more muscle or needs more force to pump blood around the body. OK, that's what we needed to say there. OK, but most of you did well on that question, so well done. If you're ever in doubt on a question like that on how they're different, you can get two marks automatically by saying that the left ventricle has a thicker layer of muscle or has more muscle compared to the right ventricle. OK, so having that thicker muscle OK, is automatically two marks. You get one mark for the word thick and a mark for the word muscle. OK, nice and easy on that question for two marks. OK. Um, so remember when I say sometimes you have to write three points to get three marks, there are some questions where those points can be just words. OK, so. Moving on to the next question, this one. Um, so when obviously we had a look at going through the feedback yesterday. Um, I asked some of you to um, to redo a question. Now, some of you were redoing this question, OK, 2B, and some of you were redoing eight. See, so those two across the board were some of the most poorly answered ones because you hadn't necessarily made the correct links or you were making some silly mistakes as um, as you went through. OK, this question here. Asks you to explain how these factors can increase the risk of developing coronary artery disease. So you had to name at least four factors, but not just naming them. You had to tell me why that factor can negatively affect the heart essentially or negatively affect well actually coronary heart disease yeah negatively affect the heart or the blood vessels okay so essentially what i was looking for here okay were at least four risk factors so the first one is genetics okay you can't necessarily tell me what genetics can do to the heart but you can say that some people inherit an increased risk from their parents that's explaining where that risk comes from essentially okay um you could have said some people inherit high cholesterol that you could have named it okay but inheritance is um a risk okay your genetics all right no one put that marking point okay so always remember that if we're looking at something that is not a communicable disease something we can't catch genetics is always going to be a risk factor for it okay now um Inheritance we've got here. Some of you did say smoking, but I can't just give you the mark for saying smoking. 
okay you have to tell me why smoking can negatively affect the heart and some of you talked about the fact that carbon monoxide um obviously takes the place of oxygen in the blood now that is correct that is correct and why smoking is bad for you however you have to link it to the heart so if you'd have said that um carbon monoxide takes the place of oxygen on your red blood cells so less oxygen is available to the body which means less oxygen would be available to the heart and increase the risk of heart attack then you would have got the marking point for that one okay but that's a lot for you to write to get one mark that would only have been worth, worth one mark okay so an easy way would be um, that smoking also increases blood pressure and increases the risk of blood clots, which can increase the risk of developing coronary heart disease. OK, most of you um, went down the route of smoking um, clogs up your arteries with tar. That's not correct. OK, that's a misconception. OK, tar is in cigarettes, but tar doesn't get into your blood tar can clog up your lungs okay um, and small particles of tar build up in the lungs to make them black and, and not function well however it doesn't get into the blood and this question is looking at um, the blood and the blood vessels okay so there's a, a misconception there all right um some of you did have other risk factors so you said lifestyle but you haven't necessarily linked it like lack of exercise that is one okay but you have to say that lack of exercise um is bad because lack of ex or exercise strengthens the heart it makes the muscle more effective now some of you kind of tenuously linked to that but you didn't actually say about strengthening the heart muscle okay and you have to say that to get the marking point okay or the exercise can reduce blood pressure okay so it's about having those factors OK, and linking it to how they affect the heart. Now, we did this when we did smoking and coronary heart disease. You did this as a research task. OK, so when we're looking back at our notes, what we might want to do is go over those notes and have a look at what risk factors we actually have. OK, because it might be that your notes are not um, uh, concise enough to revise from. OK, so uh, you could have said high di uh, diet, high in fat or cholesterol. Now, some of you did have that marking point, but you didn't then link it to what it was. OK, or how that risks the heart. So you could have said that that increases fatty deposits in your arteries. Remember, we talked about that. We talked about plaque. OK, some of you did say that. OK, some of you got four marks in this question. So well done. OK, um, stress. But then you didn't say why. So stress can lead to high blood pressure or increased blood pressure, which increases the strain on the heart. OK. Um, so all of this has to be linked to the heart. OK. All right. So this question, question three, very well answered. OK. And if you didn't get full marks here, um, the main reason was because you didn't discuss enough nutrients, you didn't put enough points. OK, so I've got a lot of data here on this table. OK, sorry, I realised that I just... Um, waved my hand and you can't see my hand so actually let me just say so here I've got data on oat milk and almond milk okay and I've got a lot of nutrients here okay so I'm looking okay at all of this okay so I have um fat I've got energy I've got sodium I've got carbohydrates I've got sugar I've got fiber I've got protein okay and the question is asking you OK, to um, discuss which milk would be the most suitable for this person. So if you're asked to discuss something, you need to basically look at all of the evidence that you've got and then talk about why one might be more suitable than the other. OK, now most of you did this. Well done. OK, most of you got five marks and you've got four because you just missed out one point. So here what I would do is if I've got all of this data, I will talk about all of that data. OK, so I would talk about energy. I would compare fat. I would compare sodium. I would compare carbohydrates and sugars. I would compare fiber. I would compare protein just to make sure I'm covering all of my bases. OK, because most of the marking points for this question are about compar comparing those nutrients. You don't even have to tell me which one is going to be more suitable for weight loss. You could just say you could make a judgment at the beginning. You don't have to tell me why. You could just say, I think oat milk overall is more suitable because it has more protein that's used for muscle that will help with exercise blah 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 okay make sure you're comparing all of those nutrients because that's where that marking point is okay now some questions when we're talking about this require you to tell me what that nutrient is used for so do that here 
So, for example, um, almond milk has less energy. Um, energy is um, what well, basically energy is required for us to survive. OK, but if we're eating more energy than we need, then we can store that as fat. OK, so that's an explanation of why that might not be suitable um, for for this context. OK, but well done here. Just most of you lost the marks because you didn't put enough points in. You didn't talk about enough nutrients. OK, all right. So. Most of you got the next one, in fact, talking about um, non-dairy, why, as in personal choice here, there are lots and lots of answers here. So I've put allergy, intolerance, vegan, want to drink less fat. There were other things like ethical reasons, vegetarian, things like that. Anything will work there, OK? Now, this question here, some of you describe the test for protein so you don't or you weren't sure on your knowledge of your food tests. You will have to know your biochemical test. You need to know the test for starch. You need to know the test for sugars. You need to know the test for protein and you need to know the test for lipids because you will have that come up on paper one and paper two. OK, it comes up very frequently and it might come up like this. OK, obviously where you've actually got one here or it might come up as part of an enzyme question and you're like, oh, this isn't the same topic. That's how your topics are synoptic. OK. When you're sitting your final exam, we have taught you everything on the course and therefore you might get a question that pops up as a sub part of a question like this as a B that makes it doesn't directly link to part A. OK, it's a synoptic question. It's linking lots of topics together. OK, so you need to be able to tell me how to carry out that Benedict's test. And if you are looking OK, at uh, your biochemical test, always tell me what the name of the test is. OK. Um, what the positive result is. If it's a describe how, like this one is, you need to give me a method. Now, this is only two marks, and actually that's quite uncommon. If it was a describe how I can test for glucose, I probably will have that as a three marker, because here I've got three marking points you can see. You add your Benedict, so you're naming the reagent, you're saying the, you're, or you can say a Benedict's test. I have to heat Benedict's, so normally you get a marking point for heat, and then you get a marking point for your positive result, okay? So um, this one here, again, how my questions are synoptic because this is actually a question on the immune response, OK? Explain how proteins, special proteins that are named in this question, OK, um, can help protect the baby from disease. Now, most of you here didn't actually remember that antibodies are proteins, OK? So you haven't made the link that antibodies are proteins. Um, so you didn't know really what you were talking about, OK? But you actually get a marking point for just saying there are antibodies, OK? So for saying the word antibodies, then you have to say what antibodies do. So antibodies bind to antigens and that destroys a pathogen. Now, on this marking point, I'm going to highlight this word here. The word destroy or kill was underlined. So if you said the pathogen was broken down, you can't get the marking point here. And this is where biology marking schemes are very specific because they will have words that you absolutely have to say to get the marking point. And more often than not, if you're talking about the immune response, you have to tell me that that, that pathogen, whatever it is you're talking about, is killed or destroyed. Breaking down is not sufficient enough. OK. All right, you have to say that it's destroyed. OK, so that's where some of you lost that mark. Another maths question. Now, this one, most of you thought this was percentage change because it said the difference. OK, and we are talking about percentages. OK, and this is where reading the question carefully um, comes into play, because actually it doesn't say calculate the percentage change or percentage difference. OK, it says calculate the difference between the percentage of moths that are dark coloured in 1992 and the percentage of moths that are dark coloured in 1998, OK? And this is where worded maths questions and a skill of decoding your exam question comes into play, OK? I mean, some of you highlighted bits in your question. Get into the habit of doing that because that will help you process what you're reading, OK? Highlight bits, underline bits, circle bits, OK? Write big question marks all over your, your question papers so I know that you weren't really sure, OK? Obviously, don't do that in your final exam because I won't be able to help you. But in any other ones we do, 
okay if you're not sure and you think that you've done it right okay then I will be able to help you with that if you make an indicator of what what um, it is you don't understand but here you misread the question most of you misread the question and you basically calculated percentage change or you got the wrong total of moths okay so some of you will have seen that you had ECF written so you would have got it would have looked like that ECF okay now what that means is error carried forward and that um on a mark scheme essentially is um where you have a multi-step calculation and you've done one of the steps incorrectly but you've got an answer um, that is a correct answer for that calculation that you've done and sometimes you will have that now not all maths questions in biology allow error carried forward okay but this one did so some of you so here obviously you had to work work out the total moths in 1992 which was uh, 36 um, and then work out what 27 was out of as a percentage out of 36. Now some of you okay, calculated the total number of dark moths and the total number of light moths okay, and used those numbers um, and that's where you've got your error carried forward because your calculation technically was correct for the one that you've done. Okay, So um, here you had to calculate 27 as a percentage of 36, which is 75, and um, 9 as a percentage of 22, which was 41, and then calculate the difference. OK, so that was where you got your marks there. OK, so you get one mark for calculating the percentage of dark mass in 1992, one mark for the percentage of dark mass in 1998, and then one mark for calculating the difference. And then your graph should have looked like this. Now, some of you um, lost marks for your scale because you uh, your scale started at two, for example, um, or your scale went off the page, never have your scale going off the page, okay? Um, or you misnumbered your years. Um, so we had a few 1922s, okay, instead of 1992s, okay? Everything that is on your table needs to be on your graph, okay? That's what we're looking at here. Um, some of you actually didn't plot two lines because you didn't read the graph correctly, OK, or the question correctly. At the top, it says plot a line graph to show the number of light coloured moths and the number of dark coloured moths in 1992 and 1998. So you couldn't get full marks there because you lost marks for your plotting your points and your lines there. OK, so. I mean, graph was very well answered other than those silly mistakes that some people made. OK, well done. This question, structure, cell structure. I don't need to actually go over this because you were pretty good on this one, cell structure. I will go over the magnification question though, because some of you made some silly mistakes so didn't get full marks, even though your workings are correct, okay? Um, and I'll tell you why. Okay, so when you're marking this question here, okay, on the model answer, um, I have got different numbers to the numbers on the mark scheme. Now, the mark scheme said that this cell should be about 50 millimetres, and that's not the case um, because obviously when you photocopy something, the size of the image reduces. Um, so essentially, um, when you have a measurement like that, you have a range because um, it could be that the size is slightly smaller. Now, you get your measurement mark okay so if you've actually measured correctly a range between 44 and 46 millimeters was correct some of you had 40 i had 41 which i don't think you were measuring the whole cell you were measuring the go back you were measuring this bit not including the cell wall okay so that the cell wall was the whole cell okay if you measured p and q that's correct but i measured p and q and i got 46 okay so if you're getting 41 you're way off there so i would invest in a new ruler OK, so. Sorry. Convert, you got a mark for converting that into micrometers and so millimeters to micrometers, um, and then you get a mark for dividing one by the other. OK, now um, you will notice in this question, there is absolutely no um, equation. So you had to remember the equation. You had to remember I am. OK, which all of you could remember I am. So well done. Um, it did help you with the conversion, though, because it said one millimetre equals a thousand micrometres. OK, so they help you out in some ways. All right. 
um, you had an answer depending on what you used as your measurement, okay, between 352 and 368. OK, now, if you lost marks on this question, it's possibly because you put the wrong answer down here that this was correct. So some of you only got two marks because um, this was correct, but you put it into your calculator wrong. OK, so just always be careful when you're putting it in. If you're doing this divided by that, then this top number needs to go into your calculator first. OK, not the other way around. All right. Osmosis question. OK, definition of osmosis, most of you could get at least one mark, but you're forgetting that um, osmosis is across a membrane. OK, so the difference between diffusion and osmosis is that there is a partial permeable membrane. All right. And most of you forgot to put that on your definition. The full definition is the movement of water from a high concentration to a low concentration across the semi permeable membrane. OK, and that's all that this was asking for a definition of osmosis. OK, that's why it's two marks. Now, the independent variable, remember that the independent variable is what is being changed. OK, they, you had a method to refer to, to read through. And I think some of you didn't actually read this bit. You just skipped to the first bit. All right. This is actually important because the rest of the question is relating to this. OK, so. Independent variable. OK, he is changing. He's changing what he's putting in the cylinders. So you could have written not in the cylinders, in the test tubes, on the cylinders. OK, so he's changing the tube contents or the solutions in the tube. You could also have said the concentrations of solutions in the tube. What is in the test tube? OK, would also have been acceptable if you said the cylinders. No, because the cylinders are still the same. It's what is being put around the cylinders. OK. You can even get that from the picture. All right. But most of you, the misconception that you made was not remembering that independent variable is what you change. OK, so remember that an independent variable is what you're changing. Dependent variable is what you're measuring. Control variable is what you're keeping the same. OK. Now, then we've got another maths one. This one was really easy. OK, this one was really easy because all you had to do was plug in the numbers from the question into the formula. I gave you the formula that you had to use. You just had to put the numbers in the right places. OK, it was basically just a, a plug in. Read the question, plug it in. You didn't even have to think too much about it. OK, but one of the mistakes that some of you made was that you used the pi number on your calculator or the pi button on your calculator, which will give you a different answer because this question's asked you here, if you said the length of the cylinder equals, uh, L equals the length of the cylinder, R equals the radius, and pi equals 3.14. If they ever give you a value for pi on the exam question, don't use the button on your calculator because it would be for too many decimal places. So the answer that they're expecting is if you use 3.14. So you will see in my workings that I've got 3.14, not pi. OK, not the number on my calculator. OK, because that is where you will lose some mark. All right. Now, that's why your range here is so small, 8.2 to 8.25. OK, because um, you are expected to round from that. OK, so. That's where some of you made the mistake there. Now. This question explained how the surface area would affect the rate of osmosis. You have to tell me how it would affect the rate of osmosis first from looking, OK, um, not looking at data, but from what you know. OK, so if I increase the surface area, OK, how would that affect the rate of osmosis? It would increase because there's more contacts between the potato and the water. There's more space for water to move in through. OK, so you have to have what would happen in terms of the rate and then uh, why? OK, so some of you could tell me that it increased the rate of um, osmosis, but not why. And some of you told me there was more space, but didn't tell me what happened to the rate. OK, so most of you got one mark here. Now. We've got another question here which says state another variable that the students should control in their investigation. And most of you put down what you thought would control, but you couldn't get the marking point for it. OK, so most of you said something like volume of solution or the length of the cylinder or the surface area of the cylinder. I can't accept that. And I tell you why I can't accept that, because if we scroll up. That is something that's already. 
been controlled in what the student has done. So this is where you need to read back for your method on your practical question, OK? Because if you're reading back, this one's saying another. I want an additional variable. So any of those, even though they are correct, because yes, we would need to control those variables, they've already been controlled. So here, when you're reading it and highlighting things, that will come in handy because then when you flick back, you can go, oh, they've, they've, they've controlled this. Oh, they've kept this the same. They've kept this the same. OK, so anything that's not previously mentioned can be a marking point here. And there's only two things, really. Temperature, type of potato, so species, age, um, of potato, those are the two things that we can control because they've controlled everything else. OK. Then the second part of the question was then talking about osmosis. Now here, three marks. This is where you needed to give me three points. You needed to talk about each cylinder. OK, and explain why that potato changed in mass. OK, now most of you could tell me why each one could um, change in mass. Um, but then maybe missed out the one in air, so you only got two marks. Some of you didn't um, tell me where water moved. You said water moved, okay? You said osmosis happened. Um, you have to say that the distilled water increases in mass because water moved into the potato, okay? You have to tell me where water moves from, and two, um, you can say down a concentration gradient, you do get marking points for talking about from high to low concentration. OK, but it's not necessarily needed. OK, I've added it in here because this is a, a perfect answer in terms of biology. But you would get the marking point, for example, for saying distilled water increases in mass because water enters the potato. Um, sucrose solution loses mass because water leaves the potato. OK, um, that is where you're getting the mark. So you have to tell me where water is moving from and moving to. OK. Now, this one, again, a multi step calculation. OK, for the math. This one, you have to tell me. OK, essentially, this is three marks because it's a bit of problem solving. So this question says, assuming the length has the same uh, percentage change as the mass, calculate the final length of the cylinder in the concentrated sucrose solution. OK, so you have to do a little bit of problem solving. So this was percentage change. OK, so the first thing you had to do was calculate the percentage change in mass for sucrose, which you've got the data in the table. So if you look here, I've got my original mass, I've got my final mass and I've got my change in mass. OK, I don't even have to do um Final minus original divided by original. OK, I could just do 0 0.3 or minus 0 0.3 divided by uh, the original, OK, which is 2.1. OK, so my percentage change in mass is minus 14.3. OK, then I have to calculate the percent that minus 0 0.3 minus 14.3 as a percentage of the original length. OK, so I do 0 0.14. 4, 3 times by 5 and I get minus 0 0.71. So minus 0.143, sorry. OK. Um, then I take that number here off of my original because it's the final length. OK, so if it loses mass, it's also going to lose length. So I'm taking that away. And the answer that I should get is 4.3. If you've not rounded um, in this bit, OK, so if you've not rounded in steps one or two, then um, you, you we would accept 4.28 to 4.3, depending on how you've rounded. OK, but any one of those answers was correct. OK, so it was working backwards. Bit of a tough um, percentage change question there. Now, this one here, the gas exchange. Now, the gas exchange question, um, most of you um, got this right, but some of you misremembered what your structures were um, and you said that A was, um, not A, R was a bronchiole um, or the trachea. OK, now remember your structures because you quite often get a diagram again with this one labeling it will be really helpful okay now for part two some of you um misremembered what happens to the diaphragm so some of you said the diaphragm relaxes and is dome shaped when you're breathing in okay so we're only looking here in this question about breathing in okay um and you're explaining how okay structure s which is the diaphragm enables people to but you, you don't have to name the diaphragm you get a mark for saying structure s contracts and flattens but if you know it's the diaphragm just name it you will get the marks for that okay um that's automatically two marks 
then that increases the volume. OK, so saying that diaphragm contracts and flattens or moves down is two marks. OK, then that increases the volume in the chest. That's how that enables someone to actually breathe in. OK. So you can't say more space and some of you did because you have to say it increases the volume in the in the chest. More space is too vague and they won't give it to you. Even though I know exactly what you mean when you say more space, they won't. OK, or they'll not allow it. They'll ignore it. So normally on a marking scheme, you have answers that you reject that um, ultimately sometimes can lose you marks. And you have answers that we ignore that you just don't get any marking points for. OK, just be careful there, because if you have reject ones that can affect your marks. OK, now another one, another practical. OK, I'm giving you some practical questions because this will come up on paper two and this is what you find hard. OK, now. Remember, again, the independent variable here is asking you for the independent variable, but here we've got a table. Remember that the left hand column, OK, this column here. This bit there, that whole column on a table is the independent variable. So if I've got a table, all I need to do is look there to get the independent variable without even reading any of that method. OK, I would read the method because that will come in later. But the independent variable, what we're changing is the cycling speed. OK, again, that's you not knowing what the independent variable is. It Most of the questions that you get that are practical based in biology, other than talking about methods, describe how we do this. OK, well, in science, most of the um, practical questions you get are what is the independent variable? What is a dependent variable? What are your control variables? What is a control? OK, you need to know this language. OK, I did have it on my display over there, but I changed it to the challenge wall. OK, so maybe I'll do a display up there with them all on. This maths was a. Uh, Nice and easy, quite well done. OK, it did say that um, it asked you to calculate the volume of air breathed in in each breath, but it said that it wanted the volume of air in centimetres cubed and the original volume or ventilation rate is given to you in decimetres cubed. So you had to convert. OK, again, lots of converting different units, checking your units. OK, um, simple, simple math, but actually in a worded problem is quite hard to extrapolate. OK. So calculate the volume of air in each breath and it tells you that there are 25 breaths a minute. So I need to convert 65 decimeters into centimeters, which is multiplying by a thousand because it tells you that there. OK, and then dividing that by the number of breaths taken, which was 25 to give you your answer. OK, now. <clears throat> then it asks you to comment on the effects of increasing cycling speed on ventilation rate. Now, here is when you have to use the data you have. Comment on is looking at the data and forming a judgment, essentially. OK, you can use your own knowledge as well, OK, to explain. And there were marking points available on this one to explain, but quite often you're using the data more than explaining. There were three explanation points in the mark scheme, but quite often students don't give all three explanation marking points. Now, some of you did, which was fabulous. But remember, you have to look at more than just one point of data. If I've got a big table, which I do here, look, I've got the volume of air in each breath. I've got the breathing rate per minute and I've got the ventilation rate per minute. OK, so I've got three columns of data that I can talk about in this question. OK, and then explain. A little bit to to form a judgment okay because this basically is said that the effect comment on the effect of increasing cycling speed of ventilation rate so if i increase the cycling speed what happens to my ventilation rate using your data to tell you okay so you can talk about the fact that your ventilation rate increases and these are your explanation points that you could have got your marks for by the way um so you've got more oxygen is taken in to release more energy through respiration hi mr ken um <laughs> Um, for more muscle contraction, you've got three extra marking points there, OK, which is where you could have got your four marks, OK? But if you didn't or weren't sure about your explanation, then you could also have analysed the data more or looked at the data more. So you could have said that the volume of air breathed per breath increases as your speed increases and that your breathing rate increases from 20 kilometres, but then the volume of air per breath stops increasing at 30. OK, so you're interpreting that data. Those were additional marking points. And if you're ever stuck because you're not sure about why this happens, you can always get more marks for looking at the data. Use what you've got in front of you. Use the data from the table. OK. 
And then in making the investigation more reliable, repeating, repeating or using more people. OK. That's what you got there. Most of you got that one right, so well done. OK, so the next one, 8A, some of you who didn't get this one right, this is a knowledge question. This is your knowledge. So some of you have not got good, solid knowledge on the different kingdoms. OK, so remember, you need to know your five kingdoms. You need to know about your animal kingdom, your plant kingdom, fungi, prokaryotes or bacteria and protists. Now, you need to know essentially how their cells are different because they might give you a picture of a cell. They might give you um, information like this. So what substance is the cell wall of yeast made of? OK, um, what is yeast an example of? OK, you need to know examples and you need to know what their cells look like. OK, over anything else. So you need to revise that. And again, we've got a respiration question. OK, so we've got our apparatus here, OK, um, and it's asking you to explain what else the teacher might need to investigate the effect of temperature on the rate of respiration. Now, you've got two marking points here and most of you. Um, so I'm just getting my my notes that I made about where most of you made your mistakes. Um, most of you could tell me that I would need a water bath to change the temperature or I'd need a thermometer to measure temperature. Some of you gave me two of those, which were two different marking points. So you've got the mark there. But remember that I've got two things that I'm measuring here. So how can I change two things that I'm measuring? Two things that I need to look at here. One of them is that I'm changing the temperature. So how can I change the temperature? What piece of equipment can I use to change the temperature? And then what piece of equipment can I use to measure rate? OK, what else would I need to measure rate? OK, and here the second marking point would be stopwatch. So very few of you put stopwatch. OK, so that's where your second marking point comes from here. OK. Now, why the liquid paraffin was needed, all of you could do that because we did that in the lesson before. <laughs> so well done. OK, um, so the paraffin prevents oxygen from entering, OK, or makes the conditions anaerobic. That's what you've got the marking point for there. OK. Now, a suitable chemical, most of you could tell me what the name of the chemical was. You gave me hydrogen carbonate indicator or lime water, OK, for um, X. And um, some of you put dyes in green, which is not um, correct, um, but you read ahead and put something. Oh, putting something is better than putting nothing. Um, but some of you missed off the word indicator from hydrogen carbonate and just wrote hydrogen carbonate. I can't accept that. It has to be hydrogen carbonate indicator or hydrogen carbonate solution, OK? So <clears throat> the diazine green colour change is an application question because you've never used diazine green before. And you know what? Neither have I ever used diazine green before because we never needed to. Um, but this is a context of using an indicator and explaining what that indicator is showing. It's application of your knowledge. OK, now you've got the marks here for telling me, OK, what this is showing, but you had to link it to respiration. So this one, when we're looking at why we lost marks, this one would be clarity of written communication because you weren't making the link to linking it to respiration. That's where most of you fell down. You could tell me that if it went, um, if it went pink, then there was less oxygen than if it was blue, and that, that when it was blue, there was oxygen there. But then you didn't necessarily link that to respiration. What did that mean about the respiration in the yeast? Okay, so if there's oxygen, what type of respiration is occurring? Okay, if there's oxygen available, then we know that organisms respire aerobically. If there's no oxygen, okay, so if it's pink, we know that organisms are respiring anaerobically, and that's what that answer was asking, okay, so you had to link it to that type of respiration that the yeast was carrying out, okay, so that's where you got your marking points from. This one, 8C, that's where most of you lost your marks. Now, some of you could get at least um, half marks here, okay. OK, so I thought this was a four mark and you've got. Two marks there. Unless I've got the wrong question. No, it is definitely four marks. I have absolutely no idea why that says two there. OK, <laughs> um, so. Um, this is a four mark question linked to enzymes. Now, if you're ever 
asked about why respiration is affected by temperature, it's because respiration and photosynthesis that we're going to learn about in our next topic, respiration and photosynthesis are controlled by enzymes. They're enzyme controlled reactions. Now that means that enzymes will be affected by temperature. They will be affected by pH. They will be affected by concentration or enzyme or substrate. And that is why these um these reactions, these processes that we talk about are very sensitive to changes in temperature and pH, OK? So here it was linked to enzymes. So here it just says change. It doesn't necessarily say increase. So you have to tell me what happens. So as I increase the temperature, the rate of reaction increases because enzymes have more kinetic energy to have more enzyme substrate complexes um, formed. All right, so the rate of reaction increases. There is an optimum temperature where the rate of reaction is its highest. After the optimum temperature, the enzymes denature. Rate of reaction decreases because that is what you needed here. OK, and this was one of the ones where, that you um, you redid for me because you didn't make the link to enzymes. That was the main point is that most of you didn't say that this was enzymes. Most of you could tell me um, from chemistry because, you know, the science behind this is the same, OK, as in chemistry, that if you're increasing rate, OK, it's because your particles are moving more, OK, they're having more collisions. Just in biology, when you're talking about more collisions, talking about more enzyme substrate complexes, OK, when we're talking about it, is... Um, better scientific terminology or better biological terminology, sorry, than more collisions. OK, more collisions would still be accepted. OK, but if then if we're thinking about them moving on to A level, which I'm training some of you to do, then that would be better. OK. So that was that question. Let's look at question nine. The I, oh, I'm actually not going to talk about this one very much because it was very well answered because we've seen this question before and most of you um, learned from the feedback that you got on this question. So well done. OK, um, now we are going to talk about question 10. Now, question 10, uh, this is a very, very um, common exam question that you get on digestion, uh, filling in a table of enzymes. So you need to know which enzymes break down what. OK, I've also seen that as a six mark question um, and a four mark question as like a paragraph describing the role of digestive enzymes. OK, so you need to be able to tell me what enzymes break down what and what their products are. OK, now remember, enzymes always end in ASE. OK, and the, their substrates. Sorry, fire alarm. 